The battle to detect and even prevent sports related concussions has never been more intense. And last year we showed you and we tested an impact sensor designed to alert trainers if a player is hit hard enough. Well, today for the first time that sensor made its way to Ohio. ABC 6's Adam Arrow shows us who's using it and how it works. Kickoff for Madison Plains High School is still a month away. So in preparation, a fitting. It's football. You just love it. For what's hopefully to come. We've just never really been a powerhouse in football, but I feel like this is our year. We want to be invested. We want to be the most invested team around. And I think the kids are buying into it. And I'm getting great effort every single day. And this season, the Eagles will fly. We want to take, uh, make, take the concussion issue and make it, a, make it something that the kids take seriously. With an extra watchful eye. It's a long-range Bluetooth sensor. We first told you about... <laughs> and tested... Shock box sensors early last year. It goes in here in between the plaids where that little black strip of Velcro is. Danny Crossman is the company's co founder. He says the sensors detect the level of gravitational or G force. When you get a hit, and if the impact is violent enough, the sensor sends a message to a coach or trainer's phone or tablet telling them to check that player for concussion symptoms. And what we're trying to do is prevent a player going back out into the field already symptomatic. Madison Plains is the first football team in Ohio to use the sensors. An alumnus paid for the devices, which cost $150 a piece. Realistically, that's a, they're not going to make a living playing football. What they are going to make a living at is using their brains, and we want to protect them. In Madison Plains, Adam Arrow, ABC 6 News. A new study by Nationwide Children's Hospital shows that high school lacrosse players are at risk for concussions as well. More than 22% of the injuries tracked between 2008 and 2012 were concussions, and that makes it the second most common injury diagnosis behind sprains and strains. Also included in the study, almost 25% of concussions in girls lacrosse were because of person-to-person -person contact, despite that kind of contact being prohibited in girls lacrosse.